So what we've just seen is that certain salts have got different pHs, and that was in our last video. Where we've got a pH of 7 for sodium chloride, we've got a pH less than 7, so it's acidic, for this one, and a pH greater than 7, so it's alkaline for this one. What I'm going to go through now are the equations that help explain why, why that's the case. The first thing you need to understand is what these little AQs mean. They mean dissolved in water. That means that there is no sodium chloride particle in a solution of sodium chloride. It is sodium ions and chloride ions. So what this is actually equivalent to is Na plus plus Cl minus, both aqueous as well, dissolved in water. So there's no NaCl anymore, it's just Na and Cl and water particles. That's all that's in there. The fact that this is 7 tells us that neither of these go on to react with water. That's it. So if you're asked to show the dissolving of sodium chloride, then you can do one of the following two. Dissolving means that it starts as a solid. Dissolving means it becomes aqueous, but that is better shown, so it shows you understanding better, if you say that it's going to Na plus aqueous plus Cl minus aqueous. Now this idea is going to be important when I look at the two that were not neutral, the two that had pHs that were different to 7, because something else must be happening. There must be an increase in hydronium ion concentration here, in, compared to that one, and this one must have a decrease in hydronium or increase in hydroxide ion concentration. And that's because they go on to react with water. So now I'm going to turn this into what it really is. This means ammonium ions that are aqueous, which means dissolved in water, plus chloride ions, which are aqueous. Well, we've just seen from our sodium, it's a little anecdotal, but trust me, it's true, that chloride has no effect on pH. So this is not going to react with water. Well, there's only one thing left to react with water, so it must be the thing, because the pH is not 7. So it must be this one. So what does that look like? Well, actually, it's an equilibrium reaction. The ammonium is aqueous, which means that it's present with water. So it reacts with that water, that's an L for liquid, because aqueous means dissolved in water. Water is already itself, so we use it as a pure substance. Equilibrium, oops, so it's terrible equilibrium error. If it's got a pH less than 7, it must be producing or increasing the concentration of hydronium. So I'm going to write hydronium down first, because that's what my observation tells me. It must be making that. Well, sure enough, I can actually remove a proton from ammonium and make it ammonia. Which has got no charge, you'll notice. So, in this case, ammonium is acting like an acid, which I put red underneath it, acting like an acid, and becoming its conjugate base. In doing so, it is increasing the concentration <coughs> of hydronium ions in the solution, which is why the pH is just a little bit below 7. These were such dilute concentration, sorry, such dilute salt solutions that we used that they were only just slightly above and slightly below 7. Okay, enough to see a colour change, but no more. Right, so that's what happens with a salt where you observe or are told that it is acidic. You look at its two ions and go, which one of those can actually react with water to make hydronium ions? Well, the converse happens here. It's going to remove hydronium ions or create hydroxide. They're the same thing. So again, we're going to look at this, and we've got sodium ions in solution. Well, they don't affect it, because we saw that in sodium chloride. And CH3COO, well, if that's got a plus charge, this has a negative charge. Again, aqueous. So I would say, I just said no to this one, but the fact this is aqueous must have some effect on our pH. So, that's the one we're going to focus on. So, we write it reacting with water again. And again, it's an equilibrium. Okay? 
because this is the conjugate of a weak acid. This was the conjugate of a weak base. So they only get involved in weak, sorry, in equilibrium reactions with water. Alright, well in this case we know that it's got to make hydroxide ions because the pH is higher than 7. So I'm going to draw those in straight away. Hydroxide ions. Which means that there must be a hydrogen going from here to here. So the other thing being made is CH3COOH, which is dissolved in water because it's polar. In this case, this is acting like a base, which is why I've underlined it in blue. And in doing so, it's creating an increase in hydroxide ions. The effect that has on the solution is that that will use up some of the hydronium ions. All right, so the hydronium ion concentration in water is normally 10 to the negative 7 moles per litre. If I increase the hydroxides, then some of the, they need to come back down a bit, but that will also use up some of the hydroniums. And <coughs> so they'll neutralise each other out a little bit. So there's a decrease in hydronium ion concentration, which means there's an increase in pH. All right, that's our last thing that we had to learn about in this topic. So we've done, um, in the acids and bases part, anyway, we've done <coughs> the Bronsted-Lowry definition of an acid and a base, so that proton, proton transfer. We've looked at things that are antiprotic, so can donate or accept. And water is a very good example of this, as we've just seen here. We have looked at calculating pH given the concentration of a weak acid and a weak base, and using that KW triangle if it's a base. And now we've looked at the pH of salts. You don't have to say what number it is, by the way. That comes next year. You just have to say if it's greater than 7 or less than 7, and justify it using equations like these.